So welcome back. Where we left off was looking at the notion of geometric multiplicity and algebraic multiplicity, and we have this relationship between them. The geometric multiplicity is always at least one, and it's always less than or equal to the algebraic multiplicity. Okay. And so what does this have to do with diagonalization? Okay. Well, this gives us another way to determine whether a matrix is diagonalizable or not. And here's the case. Suppose that A is an n by n matrix with R distinct eigenvalues. So actually we're in the case that we were interested in because R may be strictly less than n. How do you decide whether your matrix is diagonalizable? Well, it's going to be diagonalizable if and only if the geometric multiplicity of lambda i is equal to the algebraic multiplicity of lambda i for all i going from 1 to r. So this gives us a criterion to decide whether our matrix is diagonalizable. So in general, we have an inequality. But if you have equality for every eigenvalue, then your matrix A is diagonalizable. So I know, based upon what we have here, is that this matrix here is not diagonalizable. Okay, so the previous matrix A is referring to this one. And why is it not diagonalizable? Well, we saw that the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals negative 2 is 1. And the algebraic multiplicity of lambda equals negative 2 was equal to 2. And these guys are not equal. And so since they're not equal, it can't be diagonalizable. Okay, so without doing any more work, I know that this matrix here, I cannot write it in a diagonalizable form. So instead, what I want to do is show you an example where these numbers are bigger than 1, where we can diagonalize it. Okay, so I think just I'm going to break this example up into two parts again, like I did the other day, just because the example gets kind of long. Uh, so here's the setup. We're going to diagonalize A, and this is my matrix A right here. And I already did the work here. Find the eigenvalues. Okay, so here's the characteristic equation, the characteristic polynomial. And now I can solve for the eigenvalues from this. And so I know that lambda equals negative 2 uh, has and we want to calculate its algebraic multiplicity at the same time. So lambda equals negative 2 is an eigenvalue with algebraic multiplicity 1, because it only appears to the power 1. And then the other one is lambda equals 0 with algebraic multiplicity 2. So we know the algebraic multiplicity. Now what we need to do is we need to find the uh, a basis for the eigenspaces for each of these guys and make sure that they these eigenspaces have the correct dimension. So we'll start with 0 first. Okay, so we're looking at a minus 0 i3. And because you're taking 0 minus the identity matrix, you're just getting back the matrix A itself. Okay, and so let's keep carrying on here. This is the coefficient matrix, and I can row reduce it. Uh, to 1, 0, minus 1, and 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0. Okay. And what we get from this example is that we have two free variables. So we already know the dimension of the, uh, the geometric multiplicity, right? So this implies that the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals 0 is equal to 2. So we're off to a good start because the algebraic multiplicity of lambda is 2, uh, lambda equals 0 is 2, and the geometric multiplicity is 2. If these guys were different, we would say, OK, I can't diagonalize. I have to stop. But because they're equal, it's, uh, we can continue on with the process. So what you need to do now is find a basis. right? And so we have our free variables. Uh, our x2, and let's say that's s, and x3, which is t. And then what we have is that 
also we have that x1 it has to be equal to x3 which is equal to t that's coming from the equation still in the first row so we have that x1 x2 x3 is equal to t s t and i can rewrite this as s times 0 1 0 plus t times 1 0 1 and so I'll just rewrite everything in terms of an eigenspace. So the eigenspace of lambda equals zero is equal to, and I'll write it as the span of two vectors. We have zero, one, zero as one element and one, zero, one. So we should have two elements because we're, our eigenspace is two dimensional. So we need two elements in our span. Okay, so we have to kind of repeat with the other eigenvalue. And uh, so let, I'll do that and then we'll finish up after the I do this part here. Okay, so we look at A minus minus two I three. I've already written the matrix here and we're going to row reduce it. And after row reducing, I get one, zero, one, zero, two, minus six, zero, zero, zero. So I get that X three is free. So the geometric multiplicity of lambda ne negative two is equal to one, and that's equal to the algebraic multiplicity. So that's good. We can, can carry on. And uh, what, we'll, what else do we have here? Okay, we also know that x2 is equal to three x3 and x1 is equal to negative x3. This is coming from those equations. So putting the pieces together, we have x1, x2, x3 is equal to negative, uh, I'll use t here, t3t, which gives me t minus one, three, one, which implies that my eigenspace of lambda equals negative two is the span of the vector negative one, three, and one. So I'm gonna just take a brief pause here so the video doesn't become too long and then we'll wrap up this example.